This is the new Lady Gaga album. So Very cool. you can enjoy that. <laughs> Courtesy of Shine Box Records. All right. So let's enough of that nonsense. Uh, let's give it up for Pete Chapukio, everybody. <laughs> How you doing? What's up, pal? Good to be here. Hi, on? Pete. How are you? Great. Thank you for having me, uh, Johnny and Dana. Appreciate it. Glad to be back in New York City. All That's right. It. Cool. I like that. Now listen. For everybody out there that doesn't know, they know there's a book up here, Roller Coasters. Please, tell everybody what you do for a living. <laughs> this is well, interesting. I'm actually in aviation. I travel all over the country, and that's one of the reasons why I am able to uh, go on rides all over the country and act actually all over the world. And uh, I was actually afraid of roller coasters, even though I'm a pilot, believe it or not. So what happened was is I decided uh, that I was going to overcome that fear uh, because I had a daughter that was born, and I wanted to make sure I didn't miss out. So what I did was is I actually went out, conquered my fear of roller coasters, and taking clients out from all over, they said, you know, you know a lot about roller coasters as well as uh, aviation. You should write a book on it. So it's exactly what we did. We wrote a book called America's Top Roller Coasters and Amusement Parks, but it also has you know, tips for those who ride them and especially for those who fear them. So if you fear roller coasters, it's a good book for you. If you love them, it's also a great book for you as well. <laughs> When did you learn that you had your passion for thrill rides? And how long and how many rides have you actually ridden? I've ridden over 400 uh, different rides all over the country and in Canada and in Europe. And um, the thrill I had was when I was a pilot doing aerobatics. I love that feeling. And getting a little older right now, John, so I don't know if I can do that anymore uh, with the uh, zest that I used to do that. So th the way you get the rush or the buzz there basically is you ride the roller coasters. And nowadays, these roller coasters are actually... Uh, pretty much almost intense and duplication yeah. of what an aerobatic maneuver is. I mean, Emil Mins, Loop the Loops, and there's some great ones right here in the New Jersey area. I've done a, a tour, 40 cities, and uh, again, I'm a Staten Islander, so I like being back <laughs> home again. But uh, the thing is, uh, you've got some great rides right here in your backyard uh, over at Six Flags Great Adventure. Yeah. And of course, one of the most famous is got to be the Cyclone yeah, of course. in Brooklyn. I will not get yeah, on that. Yeah, but you know what? You know the deal is with the, with the Cyclone. I'm when sorry. you're on it, it feels like it's falling apart. <laughs> That's the best part. <laughs> they do that on purpose. In fact, in 1927, Charles Lindbergh, who's the aviator, you know, he sort of crossed the Atlantic way back when, he actually was their spokesperson and said it was better than flying, and it still pretty much is. Really? Pretty, pretty much close to flying at these days. No, yeah, I had a lot of fond memories of my father used to take me when I was a kid. And uh, I still go, but, uh, you know, it, you get like a whiplash when you get out of there. Oh, yes, you do. I've broken glasses. I've broken uh, watches. It's really very difficult. I don't find it fun. I find it very dangerous. I don't. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I disagree. Well, actually, it's very policed. It's policed really well. And this is for everybody also. You know, uh, I do a lot of interviews with astronauts, and I go through their programs. And I'll tell you, second to the NASA program in Houston, I just came back from Houston, in fact, to interview the last crew of... STS-135 going up in, uh, in July. I will tell you that they police the industry so well that um, every day they're there, and if an incident happens, let's face it, if an incident happens at, a, at these amusement parks, they close down. Yeah. They have yeah. a problem, so they are very safe. It's all an illusion, Dana. It's mm -hmm. all an illusion to get you there, to get you a little frightened, but then when you get off it, you're like, I've conquered it. No, you know what I do? I'm the bag holder. I'll hold everybody's pocketbook and eat candy and just... You? I'm good. Yeah, you know what? That. You're talking about Six Flags, and I don't get scared for nothing, but that, that was that Key to Car? What's the name of that plane? King, King to Car. That thing scared the shit out of me. <laughs> I well, mean, I wanted to get off, and I was holding... I was getting so much anxiety, and I was... And I had these little kids were next to me. <laughs> they went on like five, six times. And I went on... But it was... I thought the thing was going to shoot off into the moon. It was scary. Well, congratulations. You actually rode the second fastest roller coaster. <laughs> in the world. That was nuts. It used really? to be the first until a one over at Abu Dhabi just got built, which is a little bit faster. You went from zero to 128 miles an it hour was in amazing. three and a half seconds, up 440 feet, back down 440 <laughs> feet, <laughs> all in 18 seconds. No, it was about so. 30, what is it, 45 <laughs> seconds, 30 it's, seconds? It's actually about 18 seconds. Are you serious? But when you go to the top and you go over, it, it feels like you could actually drop onto the floor because you, you go in. That's true, and it actually uh, twirls around uh, giving you that corkscrew effect as well. It's a great ride. Not my favorite, though, but it's, it's up there. It's definitely up there. Mm. 
I had a question. I want to know what your family, your wife, your kids think about all this. Well, they think I'm going through a midlife crisis, and they're probably <laughs> correct on that. Um, I've been traveling a lot, and obviously I, I've taken them to all the places that I can normally go to. And um, we're actually going to be go doing some network stuff, and I'm going uh, down to Florida to actually do some filming on this, for the CW network, and I've done MSNBC and Fox News. And they just love the fact, because sometimes, uh, in fact, tonight, my daughter says, Dad, do you think I could get on television tonight, too? Because I've, 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 I've put her on a few times, and she's, she's doing something else, unfortunately. But uh, I, she's done several with me, because let's face it, she's the reason why we did this, is uh, overcoming fear and a labor of love. So uh, uh, yeah, they love it. Um, a little strange, but uh, for I my age, but uh, they love it. I have to well, how old are you, if you don't mind me asking? <laughs> uh, I'm a half a century old. Nice. <laughs> does, does this man say the dawn this man <laughs> So good. Now listen, I know there's a big argument about wooden roller coasters uh -huh. versus the steel roller coasters. How do you deal with that and, and you know, what's your suggestion when people tell you that? Well, it depends on what you like. If you like that rickety feeling like it's falling apart, you're going to go on a wood coaster because they make them so they sway. And they're a little rougher than the steels. If you want real, like, uh, high-speed thrill ride action, 5Gs, you know, basically you want to go on the, on the steel coasters. They go a lot faster. They're a lot smoother. Both are great. Uh, the organization that I, I represent a lot uh, is uh, called America Coaster Enthusiasts. It's a group of about 6,000 or 7,000 enthusiasts. They go all around the country. And uh, they will tell you they love the old wood coasters because it's, they're classics. They got the old bars and like, like mm. the Cyclone. Uh, and being a half century old, I, I rather go with the ones that I don't need to see a chiropractor afterwards. So yeah. uh, I tend to go with uh, the steel coasters. Kindercar, Nitro also is a great one. You went on that, no. Kindercar? I've been on Kindercar several times. Yes, and Nitro and uh, my favorite is actually right here on the book cover. And that is uh, a ride called Millennium Force. And it's in Sandusky, Ohio, in uh, Cedar Point. Uh, in Sandusky, Ohio, it's a fantastic ride. Uh, we've got some really good stuff out there. So if you're going to take a vacation, take it now. You've got uh, Harry Potter World, obviously, uh, over at uh, Universal Studios. And there's so much going on now. But that's where you'll find me, in Harry Potter World. I'll just <laughs> stay there. I do love the movie, but do you have any tips for those of us, myself included, that are afraid to... I've got three tips. Number one, keep your eyes open because if you close your eyes, which I think you might do every once in a while, Dana, I got that feeling. Well, the picture that they took of me from, you know, <laughs> yeah. when you take the picture, my mouth was wide open. My eyes, I looked crazy. I yeah. ripped the picture up, actually. I Always keep your to. eyes open because I learned this as a pilot. You suffer from vertigo. Once you get off that ride, that's it. Anything you ate is coming back up, okay? Also, breathe and scream. It's the only place you could scream without getting arrested. So why not uh, do that? Keep the blood up into your upper extremities because that way uh, you won't get so dizzy or queasy. And the other thing I say is take it slow. Don't go with Kenda Kaj, your first roller coaster. Start with a little <laughs> mouse roller coaster yeah. and work your way up and, and until you're familiar and comfortable with it and, and go from there. So, you know, that's basically some of the tips I, I would recommend. One last tip would be stay in the middle of the, of the train. Don't go in the front because it's too visual. And in the back, uh, especially on the Cyclone, uh, you don't want to do that either. Stay in the middle until you're comfortable, and then you can move back and forward. So those are some of the tips that have worked. I got a Thank question, you. a good one. Huh. Do you ever come across anyone that had a heart attack or anything <laughs> like that? Well, I, I am CPR so qualified, so I, I, hopefully that won't happen. Uh, there have been incidences, obviously, uh, yeah. that, that is a concern. Uh, and it does happen because somebody might not know they've got a, a heart condition. Right. Uh, you, you can't tell on that. There is a sign saying if you have any of those signs, not to go on them. But overall, the manufacturers are pretty good at not giving the intensity too long. Not mm -hmm. like it as a pilot where you might take sustained five Gs or five times the weight of gravity for 30 seconds. You only do it for five or six. So right. it gives you a break uh, along the way. So uh, they're very concerned about that, the manufacturers, because these rides are going faster and they're going longer. Yeah. And we've got to be sure about that. So the future might even be roller coasters that have simulation rides, hmm. like the Mummy over at Universal Studios. Where Studios. you're not really moving, but you You're moving you think a you, little, yeah, but you're that. also getting the effect. And that seems to be where a lot of people are going these days. Mm -hmm. So that's another aspect of the, of the industry. Yeah. Well, listen, Pete, we're, we're pretty much went out of time. Uh, what's your website or Facebook? Can you tell everybody? 
uh, a lot of uh, stores, uh, selected bookstores, and of course, my I have to mention this for the, for the publisher and for Tate Publishing because obviously they gave me the opportunity to do this. And uh, obviously, I got, I got a Wikipedia page, and uh, if you just Google my name, Pete Tribuco or uh, America's Roller Coasters. Uh, dot com, you, you'll come up with uh, with that as well. Thank you for having me today. Thank you. Thank for you, coming. Pete. Listen, come back anytime. Let's give it up for Pete Chavuko, everybody.